I mean, you know, to his credit, he was winning the fight. But defensively, he's flawed. And also, he's got to, you know, let me let me use the terminology that is used here, you know, by um, um, older gentlemen. You know, you can't tell this motherfucker. You can't tell him nothing. He hard headed. You know, he wanted to know it alls or he comes across as that way as, as, as a know it all. Anyway, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. You know, he's got to keep his emotions in check when he goes in there to fight. You know, like he, he, he has so much to offer to the division. But when you look at what happened with him in the Andre Ward fight, when you look both of the Andre Ward fights, when you look at what happened in this fight, you can somewhat say there are mental collapses. You know, he thinks he's tough shit. And now he got knocked the fuck out by a fighter who's not even known to have knockout power. But what happens when you keep getting hit with, hit with the same shit? Or eventually you get hit with a clean punch, you're going to go down. Golovkin has a similar issue where it's like, okay, bro, we get it. You got a chin, but you can't keep using your motherfucking chin as a fucking punching bag. Here's what uh, Kovalev had to say, you know, after he got out the hospital. This was like a couple of, this was August the 6th earlier this month. So for those who don't know, he is coming back. He is going to exercise his rematch clause. Um, HBO had an option on Elena Alvarez, so he couldn't just win the belt and go over to Showtime or wherever. So, you know, it's looking like it's going to happen. Kovalev or Alvarez, Eliator Alvarez versus Sergey Kovalev, two for the WBO 175-pound title, December the 1st, December the 8th. You know, either way, any of those dates, it's going to be competing with another card. But this night, it competed with another card. You know, so here's what he had to say. Hi, boxing fans. I want to say big, big thank you for your support before the fight and after the fight. Uh, I rested. Uh, right now, I'm feeling good with my health, everything uh, okay. And I'm feeling good. Just uh, need to get a rest, couple months fr uh, from the boxing, and with a new mood, new motivation, I will back as soon as possible to the fight, and uh, will be continue to be the champion again. Thank you for everything, for your support, and uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. So, let's go look at the 175-pound division. We have Adana Stevenson, who's going to be taking on... Um, oh, it's too bright. Adana Stevenson will be taking on Alexander Grozdik. Uh, Dmitry Bivol, we don't know what he's going to be doing next because they were... It, it, it was a path being laid out by HBO and the uh, promoters and the uh, management of both of these teams to have Dmitry Bivol versus Sergey Kovalev likely at the end of this year or definitely you know the beginning of uh or the first quarter of next year but it's looking like that plan especially that it, you know it's just not enough momentum or, or not enough momentum to them to make that fight or or looking back at it you know to make that fight anytime soon so if you're looking at the division you got Arthur Burt to bf who's going to be taking on uh Caleb johnson for the IBF title on October the 6th on The Zone. And he's going to be on The Zone for quite some time. So that's a political divide right there. So we can just count on um, Artur Bertabiev out when it comes to um, Sergey Kovalev. Or at this, Sergey, Sergey Kovalev, the later Alvarez could end up on The Zone because Artur Bertabiev is also co-promoted by, well, he is promoted by uh, Yvonne Michael. Or Yvonne Michel, however you pronounce it, who's also the promoter of um, Alvarez. Basically, he promotes Bertha B. Evan Alvarez. How about that? And Adonis Stevenson. So, when you look at um, the WBO rankings, you got Anthony Yard, who was there, but it's still not known if he's going to be ready. And you got to think that maybe Anthony, Nar Anthony Yard will be um, eventually the WBO mandatory for the next six seven months so for the winner of uh Alvarez versus Kovalev too they're likely going to have to either fight Anthony Yard or uh, Marcus Brown so they're not going to you know really be focused on you know it's the the 
the 175 pound division is weird because the fighters are scattered all over the place and where they're scattered you you can see for example it's it's hard to believe that Adana Stevenson is, is is ever going to leave Showtime uh, PBC's grasp. Alexander um, Grosdick is a top ranked fighter, and they they have to fight. This has to happen. It's a mandatory. You got Dimitri Bivol, but looking at the rankings, it's hard for me to believe that Badu Jack would fight him. Especially since Dimitri Bivol is going to be on HBO, and Badu Jack is a Mayweather Promotions guy, Leonard Ellerby. That would be you know. Archibald Dubiev is over on the zone, and it's like, okay, all right, it's financial security, but politically, that adds issues. And then you have Alita Alvarez, who has this one fight left with HBO, unless HBO goes and tries to sign him up long term. Kovalev ain't going nowhere. Kovalev's got another, um, he just signed another new deal with uh, HBO. So it's weird. But. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see when the fight is officially announced. You know, we're right now almost in September. It's August the 28th right now. So I can imagine they're going to announce the fight, you know, if it is going to happen unless something dramatic changes. I mean, right, Kovalev has the rematch clause. And HBO has the, the, the broadcasting option. So there's nothing really in the way unless the fighters just say, nah, it's not happening. Anyway, I'm Teacher Controversy. This is Teacher Controversy Live. Please subscribe.